So in today's video, it's going to be in response to one of our YouTube videos with over you know 30,000 hits talking about why people get pain underneath the shoulder blade and why that pain exists. So in that video, we talked about when you have a shift in the costal vertebral or the rib spine joint, you can get that acute sharp pain underneath or it feels like it's underneath the shoulder blade. A lot of people think it's a muscle issue, but usually it's actually a joint. It's a, either a small little shift or irritation in that joint in the rib cage. And so that's what we're gonna be uh, helping to manage today. In the previous video, we had lots of comments of people like, oh, you're not showing us how to fix it. That's what today's video is in response to. So we're gonna talk about from A to Z what I would do uh, if I had this issue and what you should do as well. So in terms of managing a rib joint, like if, you know, number one, first you wanna get it diagnosed, you want to make sure that that indeed is what the issue is, that it's a pain coming from the cost of vertebral joint and not something else. But if you've had it in the past and you, you think that this is the issue, uh, the first thing you want to do is to try and reduce the pain and, and reduce any inflammation is the, if there is any. Odds are it's probably just a couple of the nerve endings from some irritation in the joint that are a bit irritated and then that's going to send a pain signal up to your brain. So the first couple of things you want to do if you have a shift in one of these rib joints, especially if it's a little bit lower under the shoulder blade that can be really sore, the first thing you wanna do is pain management. So with that, we have our ice pack. And so what you wanna do is lie on the ground with the ice pack over the sore area for about 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off, 10 minutes on, 10 minutes off, and hopefully that will bring down any irritation in the nerves there. And that's basically a Band-Aid solution, but it should help a little bit with the pain. Now, uh, if, you, uh, if that doesn't help, or if it doesn't help enough, the next thing that I would do is add a breathing exercise to that. So uh, while laying on the ground with the ice pack there, I would work through uh, some diaphragmatic or some belly breathing. And with the belly breathing, what we wanna make sure when we focus on when we're lying on the ground is that all the breath comes in through the abdomen and there's very little breathing through the chest. So I, I'm gonna get down on the couch and show that in a second. Actually, heck, I'm gonna link another video talking about the diaphragmatic breathing. But that's where you wanna lie on your ice pack and you wanna focus on breathing nice and easy down into the belly, reducing the amount of movement through the rib cage. And this is also gonna help control pain because it's gonna help calm down some of those nerves that are irritated by calming you down. Uh, it's gonna take some muscular stress off of the rib cage because it's not gonna be expanding as much. And it'll help with just general muscle tension and general nerves, if you will, for lack of a better term. So adding some belly breathing in with the, uh, the icing at the same time while you're on your back is fantastic. So in the video that I'll try and link, you'll see that sometimes you can put a shoe on top of your chest, sorry, and on top of your belly and that the only thing that you move when you belly breathe is the belly. And so that's a really good uh, trick that you can use. Now, let's say that this has been going on for a long time and that there is a lot of irritation in those nerves and you haven't been able to get in to see your local chiropractor yet uh, or somebody in your neighborhood. This is where you actually might wanna go talk to a pharmacist uh, if this condition continues to get worse, you can get pain kind of shooting through the chest as we talked about, uh, and it can become really, really, really debilitating, and it can, quote unquote, kind of spread away from the initial area. That's your body's way of telling you, hey, there's something wrong here. The pain's gonna go to a larger area. It's gonna affect more joints and more muscles around it. So I'm of the belief that, you know, you maybe you wanna go talk to a pharmacist. You might wanna get some sort of pain medication just so you can get through life just so you can uh, survive until you can go see a professional to help manage that. So uh, I don't know if a lot of other chiropractors would recommend it. I would say go talk to your pharmacist because it is no fun to be in pain and you definitely don't want it to worsen and start shooting through the chest. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is to be a little bit more aggressive with it if it still hasn't gone away. And that's where we're either going to use our lacrosse ball or our foam roller. And so if the, the rib pain is say a little bit higher, maybe top of the shoulder blade or above, 
this is where we want to either uh, lie on that lacrosse ball on the ground and move it up and down as we shift our body, or we want to find a door frame. And so uh, we've done an Instagram video on this already, but if we're gonna find a door frame, I'm gonna go demonstrate that now. Camera's not gonna move with me, but it should uh, still be really beneficial. And if the rib joint is a little bit higher, or really right on the top up here in the first rib, that's where we were gonna get up against the doorway and roll that ball around right in through there. So I'm gonna go demonstrate that right now. Hopefully this works out for the best. So in this case, what we do, I am a little far away, but that's okay. Ball up there, up on the rib joint, and then we can roll over top of that rib joint right there. And it's gonna be a little bit sore. It's probably gonna be quite painful in some cases, but work through it, breathe through it nice and easy. If the pain's more than say a six or seven out of 10, you probably wanna quit it because it might make it a bit worse. But if it's tolerable, and especially if the pain gets a little bit less worse, like if it starts to go down, that's where you wanna do this more and more. That's a good encouragement from your body that there's something uh, that's working. Now, if that rib issue is a little bit lower, say the, the upper one third of the shoulder blade or down, all the way down to the back, that's probably where you want to use your foam roller. Because it's a bit bigger, you're going to have uh, less access if it's up here at the top, but it will work very, very well if it's down towards the, uh, the bottom of that shoulder blade. So for using the foam roller for this, what we want to do is, uh, oh, we're not going to be able to see here. That's fine. That's okay. So what we want to do is we want to uh, bring our arm around our body like this to get the shoulder blade out of the way. And as we're rolling on the rib joints, we want to just go up and down through here. So not straight across the back of the spine, because that'll get more of the paraspinal muscles and the spine joints. You want to be a little bit off to the side and you want to have the arm around and that's going to get the shoulder blade out of the way so you can roll over top of those costa vertebral or the rib spine joints. Now, if you've gone through the icing, you've gone through the breathing, uh, that will maybe relax the muscles enough where the joint itself might be in a really great position to get a little bit of a release, uh, a self cavitation, if you will, let some of the gas out, uh, and that might get you some really, really good relief. Again, with this, if the pain level is over a six or seven out of 10, it's making it worse please stop it. But if it seems to be getting better, that's where you should continue with your rolling efforts. Now, something that we should have talked about from the start, but I forgot, uh, is some postural modifications. So this goes along in between the icing or with the icing. You know, the rib joints are going to get a little bit more irritated if you're in a hugging or holding a keg type of position. So when you keep the shoulder blades kind of back and down, like you're putting them into your back pocket, that's something that'll get you through your day at the office that's gonna be an important postural and behavioral modification that will help take some stress off of those joints. Now, the, the last two things that we're gonna talk about are uh, some mobility or some movement exercises that will hopefully take some stress off of those joints uh, and also maybe uh, move that rib joint and mobilize the rib joint to help with your pain level. So one of them is the reach back exercise that we've talked about quite a bit. Uh, and then the other one is some stretching through the rhomboids. So uh, moving that shoulder blade backwards and forwards, really wrapping it around the chest. It might be a little aggravating at first, but what you might find with this gentle, gentle dynamic mobilization where we just move it and we give a little bit of a pull at the end, stretch a little bit through the rhomboids, it might wiggle through that and mobilize that costa vertebral or that irritated rib spine joint a little bit. Uh, and it should, it should help quite a bit to mobilize it, hopefully bring back the pain. And then the last thing that I would try is the reach back drill, which we've done a ton of times where if the issue is on my right hand side, I sit down on my heels, hand is forward, arm is like this. And then we twist up to the sky and I'll twist through the spine but it'll also 
mobilize that rib joint a little bit. So that again is our reach back. And again, with all of these, if you find that it is relieving, I would keep going at it, keep working with it, uh, do some experimenting. And I think those are some of the best drills that we can do and that we can try to help uh, mobilize and move those rib spine joints if one of them is irritated. Now the big caveat I have to say with all of this, and it's something that I, I really rarely say, uh, I don't really believe in just going to a chiropractor for a band-aid solution. That's not how we practice in our office. And it's just not my thought process on, on life. I'm not a band-aid solution kind of guy. But this is the one case where if you've never been to a chiropractor for it especially, and if you've been, you already know this, where a really, really good correction of that joint or correction of the spine can cause almost, or can lead to almost immediate relief. And, and I would rarely, rarely say this about other things that most chiropractors do. Uh, you know, results are usually good, but this is the one thing where you can go from very, very bad pain to almost instant relief in literally two seconds. Uh, because you know, when you have a, a straight issue with a joint and you have a joint solution, uh, it works exceptionally, exceptionally well. Of course, when we take care of people in the office, we would be assessing in a neurostructural examination to figure out if you know this has probably happened a number of times, why this happened, and if it's the first time, see if there's something shifting in the body, either with the nervous system, the spine, or your overall structure that might make this uh, something that's going to happen in the future. And that's where you know there's more of a corrective approach to fix any underlying cause. But this is one of those things that if you have that muscle pain underneath the shoulder blade, you have some irritation with rib spine joints, a really good correction to that joint to the spine can be, uh, it can be a real miracle. So I hope that everyone found that useful. I hope that there is some good value in there and that it actually helps to relieve some of your issues. I would love some feedback, whether it's on Instagram or on the YouTubes. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, please feel free to let me know. I hope everybody has an amazing day. Let me know if you need anything else and uh, I'll see you guys soon.